new technology continues to emerge every year, which allows urologists to do a better job in diagnosing and treating prostate cancer. The American Urological Association's annual meeting was held this year in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm looking forward to taking you behind the scenes to get a closer look at some of the new and upcoming technology for prostate cancer. So stick around. And we'll get right into it as soon as we get back from thanking our episode sponsor today. As we enter into a new frontier of testosterone replacement therapy, there is now a convenient, safe, and effective option with Kaizotrex that can be taken in pill form, allowing patients another option other than messy gels, painful injections, or surgically implanted pellets. So the big question is this, how can men and those who care for them better educate themselves regarding prostate health, the conditions that affect the prostate, and the latest technology in managing these conditions? That is the question, and this podcast will provide the answers. On the podcast, we'll be chatting with experts, innovators, and leaders in the field of urology, sharing useful information with the general public to improve their lives and increase their overall health. My name is Dr. Garrett Pullman, and welcome to the Prostate Health Podcast. Prostate Health Podcast is for informational purposes only. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as medical advice. By listening to the podcast, no physician-patient relationship has been formed. For more information and counseling, you must contact your personal physician or urologist with questions about your unique situation. Of all of the various cancers I treat as a urologist, I feel that prostate cancer has experienced the most significant advancement in technology over the last 10 years. With continued new innovation, not only with how we are able to diagnose prostate cancer, but also in the treatment arena. This year, I was able to scour the exhibition hall at the American Urological Association annual meeting for our listeners, checking out all of the new technology currently available, but also what is still coming down the pipeline. I'll be bringing you two separate episodes with today's episode focusing on prostate cancer, and then we'll be following this up in several weeks with an episode on prostate enlargement, or BPH. The list of technology for prostate cancer was several pages long to sort through, but today I'll be highlighting a few of the crowd favorites, including interviews with several representatives of each of the highlighted companies to get you up to speed. So our first stop is at the Promaxa booth today, and I'll be interviewing Dr. Amit Vora, who is the president and CEO of Promaxo. Promaxo has developed an innovative open MRI system allowing urologists the ability to perform in-office transperineal targeted prostate biopsy. And I'm excited to introduce our listeners to this new technology today. Here at the Promaxo booth and excited to have uh, Amit Vora here with us today and uh, joining us on the Prostate Health Podcast. And so, tell me a little bit about Promaxo and your technology. Yeah, so at Promaxo, we are commercializing uh, portable office-based MRI for doing interventions of the prostate biopsies as well as treatment in both office setting as well as an interoperative setting as well. So, you know, for our listeners and urologists out there, what makes Promaxo unique in comparing to some of the other technologies that are out there? Yeah, so what we've been able to do at Promaxo is we've been able to make an MRI flexible and adaptable that now it can sit in the office. We require no infrastructure requirements, no shielding, but also for the patients, they don't have to go inside a gantry. So it's all enabled with an open architecture that allows you to do procedures. From my perspective, I'm very excited about this technology. It's actually a technology that I'm actually going to be yeah. uh, incorporating into our clinic here this next month. And anything that we can do in the office, I think for, from a patient perspective, yep. there's going to be less cost. It's going to be more efficient. And just very excited about this technology. I think this is kind of the future where Thank we're heading yeah. and just excited to be partnering with Promaxo. And any final thoughts for our listeners today in regards to uh, Promaxo? I would love to say, right, I mean, we're excited to partner with you personally as well because we're looking at how you're at the forefront of innovation and you're trying to get the best care possible for the patients. And our mission is the same, to provide the best patient care possible. That's what we want to do and to be able to provide it in a cost-effective manner. So. Excited about all of that. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us today on the Prostate Health Podcast and look forward to chatting soon again. Thank you, Dr. Bowman. So again, this is obviously a technology I'm excited about. We'll be now offering this technology to our patients in my practice and will be set up to utilize the Promaxo system in the office setting. But as he mentioned, it can also be utilized in the hospital or surgery center as well. Uh, How it works is 
again, regions of interest from a patient's existing MRI images are mapped out. The Promaxo MRI system is then used to localize the suspicious lesions and obtain the location or coordinates of each target within the prostate. Then using a fixed grid template, prostate biopsies are then taken through the perineum without the need for a rectal probe. Moving forward, I'm also excited that the system will help in incorporating future targeted focal therapies for prostate cancer, which have been really gaining in popularity for select patients that are appropriate candidates, which achieves cancer control by targeting the lesions or the regions of the cancer and avoids damage to the surrounding tissue, thus minimizing side effects which are common to radical treatment, such as urinary leakage and sexual dysfunction. We're actually planning a dedicated episode coming up on Promaxo, so make sure to keep an eye out for the episode when it's released. Next up, we are headed over to the Bear Gel booth and having one of their representatives tell our listeners about a new rectal spacer to help protect healthy tissue from radiation beam exposure and reduce long-term side effects of radiation therapy for prostate cancer. We're at the Bear Gel booth I'm here with Michael Wadler with Bear Gel and Tell our listeners what's your role with the company. So I'm the area business director for the South, cover basically Texas to the Carolinas, and work with a team of sales folks and procedural specialists. Perfect. Well, could you tell our listeners a little bit about Barigel and the technology? Yeah, so Barigel is uh, for rectal spacing for prostate cancer. Essentially creates a barrier between the prostate and the rectum when a patient's undergoing their radiation therapy and protects the organ at risk, which is the rectum. Yeah. And... Comparing Barigel to some of the other products out in the space, what makes Barigel unique in terms of from a, looking at it from a urologist perspective, but also a patient perspective too? So from a urologist perspective, there are some differences. They look similar on paper, but chemically they're different. It's NASHA, so non-animal stabilized hyaluronic acid. HA is made by the body, and RHA is the most purest form of HA. It's not made by the human body, and it basically is a gel It doesn't polymerize like some of the other products on the market currently. For the patient, it's a much more comfortable procedure uh, because they don't feel like they're sitting on something hard. They don't have rectal fullness. Because it is a gel, it morphs and moves with the body. So the patient doesn't feel that, you know, doesn't feel that after they have the procedure. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for chatting with our listeners today. Any parting thoughts for our podcast community? Yeah, just in general, I think there's a huge opportunity for rectal spacing across the board, whatever product is being used, because only 30% of patients right now are actually receiving that treatment for during their, their prostate cancer. So there's 70% of men out there that could potentially use this product or the other one on the market to help them during their treatment. Well, thanks again for your time. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Appreciate it. So it is nice to see another rectal spacer on the market now with Barigel. The other is Spacer, which we were able to focus on in episode 36 here on the podcast. So with rectal spacers, a gel is inserted between the rectum and prostate with the goal to create enough space to decrease rectal toxicity from radiation for prostate cancer. What I'm hearing from urologists is that with Barigel, since there is no polymerization, the advantage over Spacer is that you can take your time to sculpt the product from base to apex and from the left lobe to right lobe to create a nice symmetrical spacing. Whereas with space or gel, once you get the needle in place, you have to inject the vial within 10 seconds and you really don't have the time to sculpt it. Bear gel is also apparently easily visualized on ultrasound. So there's instant feedback upon insertion as well. So again, definitely great to see technology designed to help minimize side effects from prostate cancer treatment. And this might be a technology we have to circle back around to and have a dedicated episode on it as well. We're going to take a quick break here to thank today's episode sponsor, Marius Pharmaceuticals, but then we'll be right back to finish out the episode. Until recently, our options for testosterone replacement therapy have involved modalities including messy gels, painful injections, and surgically implanted pellets. Men are now excited to finally have a comprehensive option with Kaizatrex that is convenient, safe, and effective. When I talk with patients, most would rather just take a pill with their daily prescription and our supplements, particularly considering some of the drawbacks with higher options, including taking a pill doesn't involve a needle causing pain, and there's no risk of transference to someone coming in contact with their skin like you have with the gels. Make sure to ask your physician about Kaizatrix, and to learn more, just go to kaizatrix.com. All right, well, thanks again to our episode sponsor today. And we'll get right back into wrapping up prostate cancer technology highlights at the AUA annual meeting. Next, I wanted to highlight targeted focal therapy for prostate cancer, which I've already incorporated into my own practice utilizing cryotherapy. There are also additional treatment modalities 
available including HIFU or high intensity frequency ultrasound as well as NanoKnife which uses a short pulse of electrical current. I was able to chat with Dr. Fernando Bianco, a urologist with Urology Specialist Group serving the greater Miami and Fort Lauderdale areas of South Florida. What caught my attention is that he has been able to offer targeted focal therapy utilizing cryotherapy and is able to offer it in the office setting with minimal discomfort to the patient reported. He's able to accomplish this utilizing a novel technique to perform a local block of the perineum. In addition to getting our listeners up to speed about the technology, he will start off by explaining a little bit about the rationale behind targeted therapy versus active surveillance. When you take a surveillance approach, okay, the paradigm underscoring that 10 years ago where it became more prevalent was the fact that you wanted to limit the harm. You don't want the harm from surgery or the harm from radiation. That said, the cancer is still there, and then those patients, the data has shown over the years, they get converted to either surgery or radiation when the bomb drops, right? And unfortunately, that rate of conversion is quite elevated. It's as high as 30%, 40% by three years, and it reaches 60% by five, six years. So the answer that we're providing here is precision in diagnostics. So it's like having that, you know, the way I put it to my patients, is like we have a GPS of the prostate. By having that GPS, we know exactly where we took those samples. And not only we get the information whether cancer is there or not, we also know where it is and where it's not. And that is what allows us to come up with a treatment plan that best serves the patient where we can eliminate the cancer, right? Not just watch it, but eliminate it and watch the patient over time without the sacrifice in terms of their own erectile function uh, and their urinary function indeed improves. So urinary incontinence, which is one of the most severe adverse events associated with either surgery or radiation, does not exist when we do this therapy. Because when we do what we call a focalix DX, we're really treating less than 40% of the prostate. We do targeted treatments, and again, it's done in the office under this transperineal approach. Well, very exciting technology. I mean, from my personal perspective, I'm always looking to be able to bring technology into the office setting. I think it allows some advantages, being more efficient as a provider, but also less cost for the patient, too, to be able to do this in the office setting. So thank you so much for your time and uh, chatting with our listeners today about the technology. Any parting thoughts today for our listeners? Well, they should ask when they are with their providers and understand that in 2023, the options are not doing nothing, surgery, radiation, or basically elimination of the whole gland. There are several options. There's a lot of great colors that can be offered without having to go through the sacrifice in your erections and their ejaculations and the urinary function. So there are options, so seek those options. Well, it is exciting to continue to see ongoing innovation with the available technology and techniques used in diagnosing and treating prostate cancer. This is certainly just a teaser of some of the new and upcoming technologies emerging here at the AUA annual meeting. As we move forward, I'll continue to highlight the new advances for prostate cancer on future episodes of the podcast, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast and we'll keep you in the loop. Also, stay tuned for our next episode, which will be a part two here from the AUA annual meeting in Chicago, where I'll be highlighting some of the new technology for men with an enlarged prostate, or BPH. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you again for listening to the Prostate Health Podcast. For those of you wanting to dive in even deeper, make sure to check out the Prostate Health Academy, which offers comprehensive and easy-to-navigate lessons that I have prepared for you. There's also an active private community forum, and I am there every day providing support, insight, and answering questions. To learn more, just go to www.prostatehealthacademy.com and click on Join Now. Well, that's it for today. We will see you at the next episode.